Coming up on Tech News Today, the House votes down net neutrality. Now it goes to the Senate. We'll talk about its chances. Also, anonymous attacking people in real life. And cheap mind control for your limbs. It's a reality. All that and more coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Tech News Today is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Tech News Today for Tuesday, April 5th, 2011. Tech News Today is brought to you by Slingbox, which can turn your iPad into a television. With the new iPad app from Slingbox, you can watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you go. Check it out at slingbox.com. Bienvenidos a Tech News Today. Me llamo Tomas. Me llamo Sara. Me llamo Ayaz Akhtar. Hola, me llamo Jason Howell. And that's all the Spanish that's I horrible. can do for this show. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> See you later. Uh, yes, this is uh, the show where we kick around the tech news of the day. And uh, just before we came down here, the uh, story broke that the House Republicans have voted 241 uh, to 178 Democrats. Actually, uh, 231 House Republicans, 10 Democrats voted for uh, overturning the FCC on net neutrality. Uh, saying Congress did not authorize the FCC to regulate in this area. That was Representative Rob Woodall. Um, the vote is what is called a resolution of disapproval. Uh, a resolution of disapproval allows the Congress to overturn uh, the the inactions of a regulatory agency, of an executive agency like the Federal Communications Commission. Uh, and and so they're saying that the uh, the regulations adopted by the FCC on December 21st, which, by the way, haven't been published in the Federal Register yet, uh, so they're actually not in effect, uh, shall have no force or effect. That's the that passes the House. Now it goes to the Senate, mm -hmm. where the uh, the Democrats who largely favor the net neutrality regulations are in the majority. Uh, OK, so if for some reason it passes the Senate. Uh, we still have a veto threat coming from the White House, though. Yeah. Uh, the senior advisors to President Obama have said that if some sort of bill crossed their desk that didn't uh, support net neutrality, uh, and an o or they didn't even use the words net neutrality, didn't support an open Internet, then they would recommend that the president veto it. Stronger words than those I couldn't imagine. <laughs> if some sort of bill that was against the open internet, we'd highly recommend the veto. Well, even if this goes through, don't forget Verizon and I think Metro PCS still have a problem with any rules on net neutrality. They had a lawsuit that just got thrown out, I think it was yesterday. And odds are if this thing does get through, gets passed, everything, they will also oppose this. So um, this is going to be long and drawn out. We will be talking about this for about five years. Did, I expect. Yeah, we'll do, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. do an April 1st episode in 2017 that will still be talking about this. Yes. But um, do, do you think that this will even that this bill will have any chance of getting consideration in the Senate? A lot of people are saying that the Senate won't even bring it up. Well, it's about the FCC having the power to do this or not. I mean, the standard response from, from the Republicans was saying, well, they don't have the power to do this, and that's the right argument you're supposed to make. Is it going to get through? I, I don't know. I mean, sometimes things get changed, they get altered, they get stuff gets tacked on there, makes it less desirable. Um, I have no actual idea what's going to happen with this. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to see the light of day in the Senate. I think the Democrats will scuttle it. Yeah, it probably won't get to Obama. That's why his support or his uh, advisors are like, listen, it's if it did, we're or gonna, we're gonna turn it down. It'll be kind of held off to the actual 2012 elections, where it'll be a big point to talk about. Yep. Yeah, maybe mm. it'll be a minor point for most people, I think. Yeah. Uh, Google's Larry Page has been in the seat of CEO once again for one day, and he's already beginning a major reorg. We talked about yesterday the fact that Jonathan Rosenberg, chief of product development, left. Uh, All Things D has a story that su uh, suggests that that was on purpose. That was precipitated by Larry Page uh, taking over as CEO, and that uh, there is a major reorg going on that eliminates a lot of Google's centralized functional structure and instead has engineers as executives uh, bypassing managers in a more decentralized system where all of the nodes connect to Larry in the center in a, in a bit of a Jobsian organization. Yeah, it's like, who does that remind you of? It sounds a lot like Apple, although it is very hard to compare Google to Apple because they're such different companies. 
And uh, taking out uh, high-level management, on one hand, you could go, ooh, that's really interesting. You know, things can get, get pushed through more easily. And folks point to the Android team as a great example of um, a sector of Google that's thrived and doing well. And so you have and an innovate. engineer like Andy Rubin in charge right. making the calls. Yeah. There's innovation. At the same time, Google is clearly interested in getting into the uh, social network space. Um, they have been p uh, playing around with different forms of that for years now. And I mean, plus one is just another. It's like, it worries me a little bit that engineers might be in charge of certain tools that they might not be necessarily the best at. Are you saying that engineers might not know UI very well? I mean, you've seen Google.com, it's pretty simple. Probably the engineer put it together. It's I, like, I, there's I, a search bar. It's beautiful. It's beautifully simple. Yes, but sometimes the you rest of the Google, the rest of the Google service is not as uh, doesn't need to be as simplified. Although I wonder about the size of. Why Google. do you hate engineers, Is Why do I hate engineers? Such a great question. I'll explain that later. Uh, but my my real focus when? on this is that when later. <laughs> Google's size is so big. It's not like Apple where they actually have everyone in Cupertino. I mean, Jobs likes to keep everyone close. And in this particular case, Google's got offices all over the country and all over the world, actually. So, I mean, they're going to be able to constantly talk back and forth and get kind of communications working. Uh, I'm not really sure that's going to work. Like, I wonder if this managerial structure existed for a good reason. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to compare Google to Facebook, for example. And it's like, I mean, Facebook engineers... Um, are a huge big part of the company, but the company also has uh, a very in-place corporate structure that I think is is um, is necessary for uh, them to grow, at least in the way that they want to be growing. It, believe, anyone who's like, "Hey, what do you have against engineers?" Nothing at all. I just, I, you know, I just wonder how uh, cutting out certain jobs that are heavy into product development and marketing um, might hinder. Google's growth rather than help it. Well, when you're talking about cutting out bureaucracy and, and, and cutting out uh, people pushing you to do things for the wrong reasons, it's it all sounds good. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a question of whether the the teams can have a good engineer slash leader. Yes. Uh, and and if you've got enough of those people, it can absolutely work, and it's, and it's probably the right way to go. On to anonymous. Uh, in a coordinated campaign of denial of service attacks, we talked about yesterday, they've been targeting Sony. Now, an offshoot called Sony Recon is gathering personal data about individuals who work at Sony, things like names, phone numbers, addresses, and attacking them directly. Uh, those attacks include prank Skype calls, shipping empty UPS boxes to their house, pretty pretty harmless stuff like that. Uh, it gets worse, though. They're, they're doing ads in the erotic services sections of Craigslist, which still exist in, in other countries outside the U.S., uh, asking for positive HIV results to be delivered. That's just nasty. Yeah. Uh, and uh, on the message boards, uh, apparently they're gunning to try to, to get CEO Howard Stringer and, he, and even parts of his family. Uh, if I were anonymous, I would want to distance... Uh myself, myself from Sony Recon ASAP because this is pretty reprehensible behavior. I mean, going after anybody's family, I, I don't think that's funny or cool or, you know, I, I mean, shipping empty UPS boxes, is that like a prank that I don't know about? I don't know. That's kind of, that, that one doesn't, you know, that's amusing. I it's guess. It's like you get a box, you open it up, there's Silly. nothing in it and you're like, Okay. Well, how's that amusing? It's wasting gas. It's wasting UPS ti time. I mean, imagine wow, if you're waiting kill. for your actual UPS package and your delivery guy's out there wasting his time thanks to these idiots. Now it's I'm going to get hacked. It's harmless. Uh, but yeah, they, it's, not, all... it's not, yeah, it's not going to physically hurt anybody, but going after anyone's family um, to me is, I mean, these are not people who work at Sony. They have nothing to do with Sony. I it's guess just the, unacceptable. Well, the biggest, the biggest thing here is they seem to be... Uh, Turning it up a notch against Sony, right? Uh, because Sony is going after GeoHots for jailbreaking the PS3. Is that the top target? Is that the word? You know, not saying that that's great. Not saying that I love Sony for this. But are they are they the top target? Are they the ones you should be cranking it up against? Mm. Uh, of all the people doing nasty things in this world. Yeah, exactly. It's sort of Sony has just become the chosen target. Uh, yeah. it, I, I, I mean, GeoHots, I, 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 on one hand, I, I, I can kind of laugh and snicker about all of this, but taking it too far is just taking it too far, period. Let's uh, move on uh, to a, uh, a NASDAQ story about Apple in just a second. First, I want to thank our sponsor, Slingbox, helping to bring you tech news today. Slingbox allows you to watch your home TV anywhere you are. You pull out an iPad, you got 
your television, you've got the things on your DVR, you got your movie channels, your sports channels, anything you subscribe to, even if you don't subscribe to anything, even if you just go over the air, anything that's on your television, you can get over the internet anywhere in the world. Or even if you're on the International Space Station, that one hour a day that they have internet connection, you could use Slingbox, theoretically. Uh, so go to slingbox.com slash twit. Uh, all, all it is, you buy a Slingbox, you plug it in, you hook it up to your television, you hook it up to the internet, then you install the application on the device you want, like your laptop, your iPad, your iPhone, your BlackBerry, uh, and you watch Slingbox on your device wherever you go. It's available at Best Buy and Amazon, and you can learn more at slingbox.com. So the NASDAQ is the is always called the tech-heavy NASDAQ mm -hmm. uh, because the NASDAQ actually has more tech stocks uh, percentage-wise than it has other kinds of stocks. And they have an index, the NASDAQ 100, that's sort of like the Dow Jones Industrial, where it yeah. tells you whether the NASDAQ is up or down. When you hear that number like, oh, the NASDAQ's up today, it's the NASDAQ index. That index is made up almost entirely of Apple right now because of the rules that they have for weighting the uh, the hundred stocks in the index. Uh, Apple's weighting in the Nasdaq currently is more than six times that of the second biggest stock, wow. and that would be Microsoft. Uh, but the market value of Apple is only forty six percent bigger than Microsoft, so less than half. Well, so why why the discrepancy in the numbers? I mean, why don't they mirror each other better within Nasdaq? In nineteen ninety eight, they did some reweighting and, and and made up and they have some rules that adjust how fast. The percentages grow as the stocks wax and wane. Mm -hmm. Apple, I guess, kind of grew too fast to, for that rule to keep up and became overrepresentative of their market capitalization. So essentially, they're adjusting all of this. They're going to make uh, Apple, instead of being 20% of the NASDAQ, uh, represent 12%. Uh, and other companies are getting an adjustment as well. And Microsoft's going to be up to 8.32%. Oracle's up. Cisco's up. Intel's up. And what this really impacts is if you are investing at all and your stocks are connected to the NASDAQ 100, well, you're going to have less Apple stock when this goes into effect on May 2nd. So that's really where the real world impact is. And a lot of people were freaking out. They're like, oh, Apple's being downgraded or something like that. It's not necessarily that case, but stock pl uh, prices were fluctuating this morning. They seem like they're pretty stable right now. Microsoft was up and Apple was a little down based on this. I guess this would also be a headache for a lot of folks who run... Um an index that uh, is supposed to follow the, uh, the NASDAQ as closely as possible. Yeah, there's a lot of funds. We can get into all kinds of financial implications, but you're right. If you, if you have a fund that's supposed to represent uh, the NASDAQ, you're going to have to sell off a bunch of Apple stocks now because mm -hmm. Apple makes less of a percentage, which means it might see a, a dip in Apple stock prices uh, temporarily uh, while people adjust to so this. So this is just the NASDAQ folks saying, listen, we can't put too many of our eggs into Apple's basket. It just needs to be a little bit, even though there's still... Too many apples. Yes. Into the basket. Apples. Right. Eggs. Right. Because Apple. Because new egg isn't involved. In that's this right. Yeah, that's the whole NASDAQ 100 shouldn't be going up and down based on Apple's stock price. Yeah, exactly. Which is what was starting to happen. Yeah. Uh, the Verizon iPhone is the better phone for making calls if you're comparing two iPhones. Uh, that according to ChangeWave. Uh, ChangeWave surveyed 4,068 respondents and found that 4.8% of AT&T iPhone 4 owners experienced a drop call, while only 1.8% of Verizon subscribers did. Those numbers were almost identical even when they weren't talking about iPhones, when they were just talking about drop calls on AT&T and all phones uh, versus Verizon. Uh, Verizon customers and AT&T customers, though, were pretty much the same satisfaction level. 82% of Verizon customers said they were... Uh, very satisfied, while 80% of AT&T iPhone 4 users said they were very satisfied. So, <laughs> essentially, <laughs> you get more drop calls than AT&T, but nobody cares. Well, I think that having been an AT&T iPhone 4 user uh, for quite a while, or enough to know that there are dropped calls and, and more importantly, just what they're like service drops. That was actually worse when I just couldn't make a call. It was not just that it was dropping, I couldn't do anything. But you get used to it because that's the phone that you have. That's the service you have. And you get used to being like, I can't call my mother from this room. I have to walk into the other room or else the phone isn't going to work or the call is going to drop or I'll only hear half the conversation. So I'm, I'm sort of surprised that the number is so high of satisfied AT&T uh, iPhone customers. Well, but it's because they're in the dark. They don't know what they're missing. Well, because I, think I switched to Verizon and life is better. 
<laughs> telling you. I think it's because AT&T people are actually using data. They have a faster 3G connection versus Verizon. They've actually te- uh, we've seen studies on that. And uh, who makes phone calls? I mean, like, if you're on an, on an iPhone, I mean, you want to use apps, you want to see Facebook, you want to see Twitter, you want to see what's going on online, and occasionally you'll take your call, which gets dropped. But, I mean, the people who went to Verizon were pretty much people who were really upset that AT&T didn't offer coverage in their area or this whole drop call thing. So maybe that's why they're so satisfied with their Verizon You phone. know what, though? Data is slower on Verizon. That's true, but it's not that much slower. I mean, it's not slow uh, slow enough so you're like, man, boy, do I miss AT&T speeds. What does suck is not being able to browse if you're on hold, if you're on a phone call. You know, I called mm-hmm. the bank the other day. I was on hold forever. It's like, if I can't browse and that's the only computer that's in front of me, that's annoying. Otherwise, uh Verizon. And the Verizon iPhone 4 did have a redesign on the antenna, so you, it's a different grip, I think, if you want to kill the actual phone. Right. It's slightly different. Or yeah, maybe Change people- Wave did not, uh, c- did not control for whether people were holding it right or not. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. On to Windows Phone 7. Uh, you can get the firmware update for your Windows Phone 7 anytime you want now, thanks to developer Chris Walsh. Uh, on Saturday of this week, Microsoft released the Windows Phone 7 support tool. Now, what this is designed to do is reflash your phone if the firmware gets corrupted. Uh, but one of the nice things about this support tool is it doesn't check the carrier or the geolocation to find out if your firmware is valid because it's limited to only flashing the current firmware you have. So if you have Windows Phone 7 from back in October, it's just going to reflash that one. Well, Chris Walsh wrote a little program called Chevron WP7.updater which works around uh, Windows Phone 7 support tool so that you can put any version of Windows firmware on the phone and bypass the carrier restrictions uh, with it, without having the restriction of only having the firmware that already exists. So because of Chevron WP7 Updater, anybody can put whatever firmware they want of Windows Phone 7 on their Windows phone. Uh, and apparently, it does have some issues with Samsung Focus. Uh, so you have to do a hard reset with the original Windows Phone 7 support tool, and then use Chevron, and then then it should work. But it's still, it's not as if it's not going to work. It just might be a little bit more of a headache yeah, to get yeah, it running. Yeah, it should work. Uh, check it out at blog.walshie.me. That's W-A-L-S-H-I-E. Any relation to Chevron, the gas and oil company? No. Okay. No. I, well, unless he, he wrote, wrote it as an homage to them. <laughs> <laughs> You'd I, be the first. I'm not sure why <laughs> anyone would do that. Okay. But uh, finally, Steve Wozniak was speaking at a keynote session, the Storage Networking World Conference in Santa Clara, California. Uh, Wozniak asked, was asked how tablets would change the computer industry. He said, tablets are like TVs. Quote, the tablet is not necessary for people in this room. Uh, but it's for the normal people of the world. Of course, he was talking to like a bunch of enterprise geeks. storage engineers at yeah, the time. So like that's, us. Those were the people in the room. You guys don't want tablets, about. of course, because you're like me, says says Waz. But what do you, what do you think of this idea that the tablet is is the television of PCs? That it gets rid of this idea that everyone has a problem using PCs because you have to be conversant with enough things to know how to use them. That's why we had shows like Call for Help on on Tech TV. It's mm-hmm. why we have the tech guy on the weekends with Leo Laporte because people are having these problems that they run into. Uh, whereas tablets, they don't they don't have as many of those problems. Well, I mean, I think I know on iPad today uh, every week there's a fi- about five videos that people send in of their. Uh little babies using uh, iPads yes. and being able to like launch their favorite game or the, a movie that they recognize. And I mean, yeah, I think that the learning curve uh, for a lot of folks, if they, are get, uh, if, they, if they don't feel proficient on some sort of operating system, is probably a lot lower than getting into a computer for the first time. Yeah, the modern tablet takes away all those metaphors that we kind of take for granted, you know, windowing systems and a pointing device and, like, a lot of these things that you actually, since we've used computers for so long, we don't even think about this stuff. But I know to explain something like a computer to just someone who's never seen one, they're like, okay, well, what's this thing? And how do I, how do I actually move things around? For a tablet, simply just tap it right there, and you can pinch and zoom, and everything seems a lot more just friendly. It's, it's, it's not as, you don't have to worry about, where is this file? Where is this? Or you're not sitting there going like, why aren't you using keyboard shortcuts? What's wrong with you? Right, because time. keyboard shortcuts are something you have to learn. Right. Whereas a tablet, there's nothing you have to learn. You might have to find it yeah. on, the, on the screen, but you know how to activate it. You touch it. 
there's also a simplicity in the hardware. Like, think of an iPad. It's like, well, what do you do when you get to get backwards? Hit the button. The button. That's like one button, right? Versus like, you get a Zoom or something, you got like four. So, I mean, you have a lot less options to mess yeah. around. You look at a keyboard, you're like, what's an escape key? What is oh, all these you. F keys? And then, like, people, people do panic with this stuff. I've shown enough computers to enough um, of my relatives that don't have an idea of what's going on. I'm like, an iPad. Here you go. Although, I, I mean, we're using iPad as an example. Um, the playbook uh, with true multitasking also, I mean, you know, I think it's going to trip up some people. Mm -hmm. I mean, not every tablet is alike. iOS is very, very easy on purpose. I mean, they are, I guess, to lack of a better word, dumbing it down for a lot of people. But it depends on the operating system of the tablet itself. Uh, Steve Wozniak had said, listen, this was the Apple vision from the beginning. We just didn't have the tools um, or the information to be able to build them until now. So yeah. this is like, this was the original idea and it's finally come to life. All right, let's move on to the news fuse. Twitter will offer branded pages as a new way to make some money. Details are sparse at this point, but the branded Twitter pages would be similar to Facebook pages. So what will make these pages different than current Twitter pages? They're supposed to make money. <laughs> makes them different. According to Forbes, Amazon.com is the most reputable company in the United States, beating out names like Kraft and Johnson & Johnson. Yes, you can trust Amazon more than cheese and soap. Just don't tell borders. Meanwhile, Comcast was also listed, but was on a different list. Comcast was number nine on the least reputable list. Ah. Sorry, Comcast. Better luck next year. Texas Instruments will become the world's number three largest chip maker after closing the deal on its purchase of National Semiconductor for a whopping $6.5 billion. This will help TI in the mobile phone and tablet markets. National Semiconductor specializes in analog chips used in wideband applications. Put on your powdered wigs, Proclamation fans. Francis, there's, n there's no proclamation fans? Whatever. Francis State Council has issued a decree that personal internet data be retained for 12 months and be accessible by authorities at any time. Google, Facebook, and others are up in arms and will file a complaint opposing the decree. Data that it is that is required to be kept includes name, phone number, password, so let it be written, so let it be retained. <laughs> SpaceX announced their new rocket, the Falcon Heavy. Going to play the heavy. <laughs> a 22-story rocket that will be able to carry satellites or spacecraft weighing over 53 metric tons into low Earth orbit, which is nearly twice what the space shuttle is able to carry. SpaceX says the rocket will be ready sometime next year, and the first test flight is planned for 2013. But that's not all. How much would you like to pay to send something into space on this rocket? Try the low, low price of $100 million. That's actually very cheap. That's yeah. several easy Seems installments. Very affordable. Nineteen ninety-five. Very affordable. Trying to speed up the time it takes to take an idea into a finished game, Fourth and Battery set up an experimental studio made up of PopCap developers. If you're not familiar with PopCap, they are behind a little game called Bejeweled. If you're not familiar with Bejeweled, you must be a very productive person. The first game out of Fourth and Battery will be, quote, the unpleasant horse meant for mature gamers. I bet it is. Unpleasant horse. horse. Don't look that up in Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll go ahead and take this one. It's Android. Uh, the site Tech from 10 got its hands on a developer version of Android Market. Buried deep inside was a new version of Google's music app for phones that mimics the gingerbread version found on tablets, but with expanded settings around cloud-based streaming. At this time, the app doesn't allow a user to actually sync or upload media to the cloud, but it is further proof that the upcoming coming cloud solution is probably around the corner from Google. Oh, proof, but it's evidence. Yeah, it's evidence. There we go. Uh, you know what's really been getting in the way of the success of the Apple iAd platform? All that content. It just gets in the way of you seeing the ads. Well, Apple's <laughs> fixed that with a new app called iAd Gallery. A user can flip through the iAds as well as lunch, launch the, uh, they can lunch <laughs> on the full iAd. Uh, the app is free and ad supported. So if you want ads and nothing else, there's an app for that. All right. Uh, I I as yeah I was just like every time I heard it I was like what I ads? No, not me I ads yeah uh, let's finish off with a pneumatic arm shall we A M O's arm pneumatic prosthesis does mind control on the cheap no invasive surgery uh, costs a quarter of the price of other mind operated prostheses to make uh, the host wears a headset. That sends brain signals to a chip in the arm that then matches those signals to a database of related actions, triggering a, ser triggering a series of pneumatic pumps and valves to move the limb. 
Thus, if the wearer thinks up, the arm moves up. I love the idea of this. However, I feel like, you know, we're all so crazy inside our minds. Maybe it's just me. But I'm like, I could just think all sorts of things in the arm and just be going haywire. Well, but that would be true of your current arm as well. I don't know. I feel like there. I have got a better relationship with with. Well, with, you, you might have to. You might have arm. to get used to it. You think? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's, you have to test it out, and you have to actually have to think command up. But I mean, it's kind. Of, it seems kind of interesting since since it's pneumatic. Do you have to keep like a air compressed air thing on you at all times? I mean, is it like a backpack? Probably not wear? at all times, but uh, you you might have to charge it up every once in a while. Can you get the arm even if you already have two arms? Because it that, would be kind of cool I to mean, go octopus. I knock, know. Knock, there, knock. All the people who need this arm should get it first. But yes. then if there were any left over, so, I would like to try the third uh, arm. Luke Skywalker yeah. first, then everybody else, right? Well, he just needs a hand. He doesn't even need the whole arm. Out. Come yeah, on. Exactly. All right, on to the calendar. Remember when we said Zadiva would get sued for streaming DVDs to users without a license? Well, that day has come. Fox, Warner Brothers, Disney, 20th Century Fox, Paramount, and Universal jointly sued Zadiva in federal court on Monday. So, that happened. Um, sorry, Zadiva. Chumbi 8 is set to ship for one ninety nine today. Yep. 200 bucks for a Chumbi 8. Anybody? Nope. 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 All right. Sprint Nexus S 4G Android smartphone shipping. Uh, that's tomorrow, April 6th, for one ninety nine ninety nine. Only a dollar more than the Chumbi. I'll take that. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll sign Good. Up for We've that. got one. We've got one. Also, the Nokia Astound uh, running Symbian ships tomorrow, also April 6th, for $80. Nokia has also announced Symbian's smartphone event for April 12th. Do we have any ideas on what that might be about? Killing Symbian? <laughs> Discover what's new with Symbian smartphones. To our Symbian They're going events. away. <laughs> uh, President Obama and Mark Zuckerberg are going to field questions from users, hurling them. Actually, they're just going to be regular questions at Facebook uh, Live them. Town Hall. Yeah, I'm going to poke you. Answer my poke. Uh, it's a Facebook Town Hall, April 20th. Uh, President Obama, Mark Zuckerberg, and Facebook CEO Sheryl Sandberg will take questions. Uh, you can post questions to the event wall. The uh, event will be live streamed. They've done things like this before. And to participate, you just like the event, and then you RSVP, and then you can uh, you can ask a question, and hopefully it'll be answered. How fun. Sony's upcoming portable gaming console, co codenamed the NGP, may be delayed. Sony America President Jack Tretton told Bloomberg that Sony might stagger the global release of its next portable as the company is hit with disruptions to its production cycle due to the earthquake in Japan. And AMD has shipped 32 nanometer quad-core Lano AP you and expect systems later this quarter. Very cool. On to the voicemail. 260-TNT-SHOW is the phone number, and we have a call about the Amazon local library streaming from the cloud and a few questions to answer. Hey, TNT. This is John from New Hampshire. Um, I only had a question about the streaming music services. Why do they have you download a client to index on your music, just to upload music they already have there? Why don't they just literally download a client Index your music if they have it, it's available to you streaming. If they don't, it uploads it so it's available to other stream other people streaming too. Or does that make me a communist? Whatever. <laughs> um, also, if people were really mad about the April Fool show, yeah, um, yeah, you know yeah, what? They, they were. Forget them. We don't need them. It's all good. No, we, Later, we, guys. We, 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 didn't, we, we, didn't, we, we would do prefer to have them. Yeah, we'd like them. Yeah. Uh, but as for the other thing, um, <clears throat> I get what you're saying, which is. Uh, you you'd look at the you'd look at your your library and you'd say okay all of these files except for these five Jonathan Colton songs exist already in the uh, in the cloud and so we don't have to upload them again we'll just note that you own them and stream them efficiently from a central server it means less storage mm -hmm. and then those five Jonathan Colton songs that weren't up there we'll upload them and that way we now have them so if someone else has those five then they won't have to upload them. That's exactly what MP3 Tunes was trying to do at one point and got sued for it. So as Ayaz is, is, is uh, often pointing out, what is legal versus what should be legal are two different things. Yeah, we talked about this on This Week in Law uh, just the other day. Uh, if the company that's up, or holding these files or storing these files doesn't have the streaming rights, they really can't just go, you know what, we'll just take this one copy and give it to everyone. That's why Amazon has the whole workaround thing where they're like, hey, we have 100 copies for 100 people, so now we don't need to have streaming rights to all. The other idea of being able to get all the licenses for all these independent musicians and everything else, that just seems like a tall task for anybody. Yeah, the, I mean, it, it's stupid, though. I understand that, that it is the law, oh, but yeah. it is a ridiculous law because 
it's the same file that's copied, right? And and you make right. a file, you make a it's, copy of the file when you play it, and you make a copy of the file when you transfer it to your cloud storage device. So it does. Th there is no effective difference to it being a file in this directory or that directory. Uh, you 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 have a whole problem with the whole like law thing then, because it, it all hinges on technicalities. I mean. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I used to do tax law. And if you want to talk technical, you got commas making a huge difference. So this kind of thing about it being in a folder or in a shared folder well, actually no, no, makes no, a I'm huge not talking difference. About, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about what is legal at this point. I'm talking about what should be legal. It should not be illegal to say, oh, those files are the same, so I'm not going to have to copy it. It shouldn't be. You're I'm not, not saying it is. So we need to vote out whoever's thinking this is a good idea. That's we, all. Well, we, we either need a judge to come in and go, you know what? Actually, that's not, that's not any different. So I'm I, I'm going to recognize that. Well, I mean, I think that that's, that's not going to happen. That's so where we're going with yeah. this is that some judge is going to have to be like, okay, uh -huh. I'm making my decision. Hopefully, uh -huh. since Amazon because is the one testing it, we're going to see something actually happen. You know, the industry yeah. is going to be angry. Amazon's going to fight back, and we're going to find out what a judge thinks. So hopefully, we'll see one way or another. Oh, good. We'll probably get some we'll judge who used to reputable. be a lobbyist for the RIAA. On to the emails, TNT at twit.tv. Jack Kaiser uh, from Lockheed Martin says, Hi, TNT. I saw online that people were buying that 69-cent Glee album to get the upgrade to the 20-gigabyte cloud service, so I thought I would try it. My debit card was recently deactivated. I'm awaiting a new one, but tried to purge the album with the old one. I had forgotten that the card wasn't good. I quickly received an email saying that payment didn't go through, but then I was surprised to find an email a minute later said my cloud storage had been upgraded to 20 gigabytes for doing this purchase, even though I ended up not actually being able to purchase it. I thought this odd, so I logged out, logged back in, and there was my 20 gigs of storage Ooh, for free. Loophole, Amazon. That, uh, that's pretty funny, Jack. Thanks for uh, sharing with that. that. We're not going to guarantee that this will work for all of you. Or you could just buy the, the, the album I would, for 70 cents. I wouldn't suggest, you know, putting in uh, defunct credit card numbers to try to get the... Uh, to save 70 no. cents? Yeah. It's 70 cents. But it is funny that it worked. Yeah. They're like, eh, you, you tried. Especially <laughs> since it was just the 69-cent Glee album to begin with. Yeah. And then you have to pay for it. As soon as Amazon gets wind that this happened to Jack, they're going to be like, plug that hole now. <laughs> Hurry up. Gets wind? Gets wind, not breaks wind. <laughs> <laughs> Two different things. One is hearing. No, I know. The other's smelling. The other's breaking. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, uh, for watching. That's it for Tech News Today. You can find us on the web at twit.tv slash TNT. You can give us a call. Leave us a voicemail like Jack did. 260-TNT-SHOW. Not like Jack. Jack wrote us an email. He John. wrote us an email to TNT at twit.tv. John left us a voicemail. 260-TNT-SHOW. You know. Actually, yeah, Jack is short for John. And this is short for goodbye. Bye. Bye.